Here's an introduction to how waveforms can be generated using direct digital synthesis, or DDS, along with an Arduino-based example. In a DDS system, there are samples of a waveform stored in a table, or they can be generated on the fly, but those samples get continuously sent out to a digital-to-analog converter to generate an analog waveform based on those digital samples. So this table here may represent 512 samples that would reconstruct a sine wave, and those samples are accessed by a counter called a phase accumulator. This counter will continuously run and then start over when it reaches the end. So on every clock cycle, when the counter increments, it points to a different sample in this table, and that sample gets sent out to the DAC. The counter doesn't just have to count up at a fixed interval. We can set it with a tuning word. For example, instead of counting up by 1, if it counts up by 5, we'll take every fifth sample out of this table and send it to the DAC. That structure is called a numerically controlled oscillator, and the clock that runs the phase accumulator counter will run at a fixed rate called the sample rate, because that controls the interval between each sample getting sent to the DAC. Here's an example sine wave lookup table consisting of 512 points. So that table could be right here in the system. And the table represents one cycle of a sine wave starting at the midpoint and ending back at the midpoint after one cycle. So if this counter is continuously pulling data points from this table and sending them out to the DAC to generate a sine wave. By the time the counter reaches its maximum value, it's gone all the way through the table once, generating the one cycle. Then if it starts over and sends out samples again, it generates another cycle and we get a waveform at a certain frequency. With this sample rate clock running at a constant frequency, sending out a sample at the same rate at all times, we can't speed up or slow down the rate that we're sending the samples out and generating signals to change the frequency. But what we can do is change this tuning word to make the phase accumulator count at a different interval, and we can send out more or less samples from the table to represent one full cycle. The way these sample numbers work in the table to represent a signal like a sine wave, the numbers range from a certain minimum to maximum, depending on how many bits the sample data contain. For example, if we have this signal ranging from 0 to 5 volts, and it happens to have been sampled by a 10-bit ADC on an Arduino, 0 volts would be read in as 0, and 5 volts would be read in as 1023, which is the maximum number for 10 bits. If this happened to have been read in on a 12-bit ADC, it would still be a 0 to 5 volt signal, but the numbers would go from 0 up to 4095, which would be the maximum number out of 12 bits. So the more bits, and the higher the number, the more intervals you have along the signal from 0 to 5 volts, and you can better represent the sine wave. So in this table, the first data point is 512, which is halfway up our 10-bit scale, and halfway from 0 to 5 volts. As we go through the sine wave, we would reach a maximum 1023, which happens somewhere around here. And as we would continue sending these samples out to the DAC, we'd be generating these varying voltages, which ends up generating our signal. Since this sample rate clock is fixed. If we're sending out all of the data points in this table, we're always sending them spaced equally in time based on the sample rate. So in order to change the generated frequency, we can change the number of samples we choose out of those available to represent a sine wave. We don't need all 512 points to make up a sine wave. We can skip every other one and still do a reasonable reconstruction, and then we can move through the whole table twice as fast for each cycle, and we increase the frequency. So we do that by changing our tuning word, which changes the interval that this phase accumulator counts at. So we start skipping samples if we need, and we generate a less refined sine wave, but as long as we meet Nyquist conditions, having enough samples at our sample rate, the generated wave contains enough information where we can at least figure out the frequency of it 
if not reconstruct enough of the original shape. So depending how nice of a sine wave we need to generate, we'd have to choose an appropriate sample rate and data table to meet our needs. If we have to skip samples and send out less and less as we generate higher and higher frequencies, our sine wave quality deteriorates, but we still generate a signal at a certain frequency that we choose. In our Arduino project, we're going to generate sine waves used eventually in audio synthesizers. So we're going to choose a sample rate of 44,100 samples per second, which is the sample rate used in CD quality audio. And we're going to use a sine wave lookup table with 512 data points. This should allow us to generate sine waves up to 20 kilohertz, meeting Nyquist conditions because our sample rate is more than twice our highest frequency. And we will design it so that we can try to get a good frequency resolution so we can really dial in the exact frequency of a sine wave that we want. Since this phase accumulator counter directly relates to which sample out of a table we are going to send out, from basic trigonometry, the position along a sine wave corresponds to a certain phase angle between 0 and 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. So going a quarter of the way along the wave corresponds to a phase angle of 90 degrees. And this also happens to be the maximum amplitude on the sine wave. And since our lookup table also starts at a phase of 0 degrees, if we go a quarter of the way through our table, that would represent the 90 degree phase position of our cycle, and would be the maximum. There's 20 samples per line here, so 128 would be about this point, which is 1023, the maximum of our sine wave. So the phase accumulator, or counter, basically points to a certain phase location along our sine wave cycle. This data sheet for a chip that does DDS generation shows a derivation of how the numerically controlled oscillator can be configured to generate a certain target frequency. This diagram for phase and magnitude of a sine wave shows that as we progress through a cycle of a sine wave, our phase changes at a linear rate from 0 degrees up to 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees. So from that, there's a relationship between phase, frequency, and the interval between samples taken along a sine wave. Each sample we send out corresponds to a certain phase position along the wave, and with a fixed sample rate of 44.1k samples a second, the interval between samples, or the interval between phase positions, would be 1 over 44.1 kilohertz, or about 22.67 microseconds between samples. So in this expression here, delta time is the time between two different samples being sent out, Delta phase would be the difference between one phase point and the next phase point between samples. Rearranging that expression, if we have a target frequency we want to generate, in our Arduino DDS system, the change in phase between samples would be our tuning word. Because in the phase accumulator, that's what controls how far we increment each clock cycle. So we would change our phase from one position to a different position based on the tuning word. Delta time being the time between samples, 1 over delta time gives us our sample rate, 44.1 kilohertz. And 2 pi represents the maximum phase angle for one cycle. In our Arduino situation with a numerically controlled oscillator, the maximum phase would be when we get to the end of our sine wave data table, which is when the phase accumulator reaches its maximum possible count. So that's controlled by how many bits wide our counter is. And this number, representing maximum phase, would be 2 to the n, because that would be the highest number that we can count to for a certain bit wide counter. Putting this all together, if we have a sketch where we assign a target frequency, we can calculate a tuning word for the phase accumulator, and each time the phase accumulator is incremented 
which happens in an interrupt in software set for 44,100 times a second, the phase accumulator will automatically increment by the tuning word amount, resulting in the target frequency being generated as the phase accumulator automatically picks the correct number of samples at the correct interval to send out the desired number of cycles in a second. So if we set our sketch for a target frequency of 2112 hertz, it will calculate the required tuning word, pull the number of samples needed to get 2112 cycles per second. The smallest increment for a binary counter is going to be 1. So by setting the tuning word to 1, we can use the same formula that we calculate the tuning word from in order to calculate our frequency resolution, or the finest increment of frequency that we can achieve as we set different target frequencies. If the phase accumulator is only counting up by 1, that's the slowest it can count. It's moving through the table as slow as possible, taking a longer time to reconstruct a sine wave. So that sets the lowest frequency we can generate. Then as we choose different count intervals with different tuning words, we can set the frequency in steps based on that frequency interval. So tuning word equals 1. The frequency resolution simplifies down to our sample rate of 44.1 kHz divided by 2 to the number of bits in our counter. So if our phase accumulator were 9 bits, our frequency resolution is 86.13 Hz. What that means is a phase accumulator 9 bits wide and the tuning word set to the minimum of 1, we're counting by 1 up from 0 to 511, and that means we can access every single data point in our table and sending out all 512 samples at a rate of 44.1 thousand samples a second, we can get just over 86 cycles sent out in one second. And if we want to change the tuning word, the next possible value would be 2. So we're counting by 2, skipping every other sample. So let's say we send out 256 samples instead of all 512. We're always sending out 44,100 samples a second. So divide by 256 samples out of our table, we can generate 86 hertz at a minimum, or we can jump to 172 hertz, and so on, by skipping samples in the table. And that's the only resolution of control with a 9-bit counter. So if we make an even bigger counter in the phase accumulator, let's say 20 bits, now the minimum frequency we can generate is 0.04 hertz, and we can target frequencies a lot more precisely. And since we need so many bits, we might as well just make our counter a whole round 32 bits. Now, with 32 bits, a frequency resolution of about 10.3 microhertz. It looks like the period of that frequency is a lot of seconds. 27 hours to generate one cycle of this sine wave? Okay, let's shoot for something more reasonable like... 0.034 hertz, we should be able to generate a cycle within about 30 seconds. So now we say we've got a 32-bit wide phase accumulator, and since the phase accumulator directly relates to one of 512 positions in our table, we only need 9 bits to access that table. So what we're going to do is just take the highest 9 bits and truncate the rest. And here's a representation of 32 bits where the top 9 are going to be used for our lookup table, and the rest of those are just going to be fractional digits. The end result is, since we can count so high, it's similar to having $324 million, and we don't really care if we're losing $10 we still have enough for practical purposes to do what we're doing. So if we want to set a certain higher frequency, and it results in a larger tuning word, like several hundred thousand or a couple million per phase increment, a higher frequency is generated by sending out less samples from the table, so the accumulator is skipping samples, 
let's say it works out that our tuning word is 5 million decimal. In no time at all, the count is so high in our 32-bit counter that it's already incrementing these top 9 bits that we directly use to get samples from the lookup table. But if we want a very low frequency, and the tuning word is going to be a lot smaller, let's say we are only incrementing by 5 decimal because we're generating a really low frequency. Our counter goes up by 5 each time, but it's gonna take quite a while before this counter can count high enough to even start changing the bits associated with our lookup table. So for a long time, we're just sending out the very first sample in our table, which is 512, over and over. So we're stuck generating 2.5 volts in this case for a long time and it takes a very long time to generate a sine wave. That's why we need so many bits on that phase accumulator, and we can really dial in a specific frequency by changing the increment down at this small level. The end result is whatever the target frequency, whether it's high frequency or low frequency, we're just picking whatever samples are a best fit for the phase at any given point in time. Sometimes we're skipping samples, Sometimes we're adding extra samples, and it's a best fit plot of the wave. We can try to improve this by doing things like if we're skipping samples, or even going one sample to the next, we're counting up by a certain amount. So we can try interpolating between the points we're plotting, and we're going to be doing some external RC low pass filtering, which will help smooth this out. But in general, for audio sine wave purposes, this works well all on its own the way it is. This is the circuit I'm using with the DUA, and I had to use this port right here. There's a programming port and a native USB port. So in my setup on my Arduino IDE, I had to choose the native one for programming, and I don't use this board enough, so I just did whatever worked. But the setup is very straightforward. So I'm taking ground, and then DAC0 is the DAC output. I'm going through a low-pass filter, and I'm using component values that I had on hand. But the idea was to try to target around 20 kilohertz, because that will be the highest frequency sine wave I'm trying to generate. This one happens to be 22.6 kilohertz cutoff frequency. I calculated that with this tool, plugging in the values I had, and seeing what the frequency would be, along with a magnitude and phase plot showing where the cutoff would be at minus 3 dB. And the reason we need a filter, the first thing is it helps smooth out our staircase waveform into more of a sine wave. But also because we're generating these sudden steps in voltage on our DAC output, similar to square waves, there's going to be a lot of harmonics and potential for aliasing and all of that, so we use a low-pass filter, cutting off above the maximum frequency we plan to generate. After that, I have a series DC block capacitor to remove the DC offset on this DAC and give us a nice audio signal that we can send on to an amplifier. The output of this DAC can't drive a low impedance load like a speaker directly, so I'm plugging this into a little amplifier. In the main sketch I created, Here's how we use the equation to calculate a tuning word based on the frequency we want, the number of bits in our counter, and our sample rate. I'm using 512 data samples for my sine wave. The DUA's DAC is 12 bits, so the highest number we can reach is 4095. So I generated this table online to work within 0 to 4095. I'm using this tool at daycounter.com, so you just say how many points you want, what your maximum amplitude is, and for convenience, how many numbers on each row, and then you just generate the table. So it starts halfway up to 4095, and you can copy that into a sketch. But I noticed a glitch. 512 divided by 20 is not a nice round number. And when we look at our table, there's 20 points along. But when you get down to the end, there's this extra sample of 2048, which is the same as the first one. But if this number divides out nicely for a round number, if you do 32 per row, your final sample is 2022, which looks right. It's not 
a duplicate of 2048 starting a new cycle. So I define my audio sampling rate, 44.1 kilohertz. This will be whatever frequency I want to generate, so I can set that later. Of course, we need a phase accumulator and a tuning word, and this one called phase increment is really just the upper bits off of the phase accumulator that I'm using to reference my sample out of the table of 512. So that contains the truncated version, just the upper nine bits of the phase accumulator when we're dealing with this many samples. But I wanted this to be adjustable, so if I suddenly want to use 1024 samples, so what I'm doing is, based on how many samples I have here, I'll just go here and calculate the width of a number that I need to access this many points. There's a function here to take a number and figure out how many bits it would take to represent that number. Then in the setup, I'm just arbitrarily setting a 1 kilohertz target frequency. Then we need to calculate our tuning word to get that frequency using our formula. The rest of this stuff is what I got from that reference article. This sets up an interrupt at the right interval to get as close as we can to a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. So whenever we get an interrupt, we go into a routine, and all we're doing is incrementing our phase accumulator by the tuning word, then taking whatever number of bits off of the top that we want to talk to our lookup table, and then we go to our data table, get the sample at that location, and send it to the DAC. So really, we don't need to do anything else in the main loop, because we already set the frequency. But if we want, we can just set the frequency anytime we want, recalculate the tuning word, and then it will just keep generating that frequency and we can do other stuff. And I ended by doing a sweep up from 0 to 4 kilohertz and then back down to 0. And rather than just showing the output waveforms on a scope, I went and used Tinkercad circuits, which is free, and they have an Arduino Uno simulator, including a serial monitor simulator. I took that sketch and cut out anything unnecessary just to show how the DDS engine works. So here in the setup, I can just set the frequency I want, say it's 555.555 hertz. If I start the simulation and then stop it at a certain point, just so we can take a look, I'm confirming the frequency I want, the calculated tuning word, which is relatively large. We can see that the system needs to send out 79.38 samples representing each cycle. And we can't send out a fraction of a sample, obviously, so it'll just do the best it can. I'm showing the phase accumulator number in decimal as well as binary just to get a representation visually. So to start out, we added our tuning word to the phase accumulator and we got this. And when we take the top nine bits off of that, it represents decimal six in our phase increment variable, which is what we're using to access our table of samples. And it says the number we're sending to the DAC is 2198. So if we look at our table of samples, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 2198. So we should do this until we have about 79 samples sent out by the time we get through this table, representing one cycle. And we can see the interval between samples here isn't even. Here we go from 6 to 12, but the next sample is 19. So it's just the way this counter increments and how the top 9 bits end up being updated as this is running. Now if I change that frequency, make it 2112 hertz. So this time the first sample we take out of the table starts at sample 24, and then we go up to 49. So we need less samples for this higher frequency, and we're skipping through the table faster, generating a sine wave. And when we let it run to the end, this time we put out 20 samples. It might be 21 samples the next time, but the frequency ends up being the same. It's okay to generate a certain frequency waveform with an extra data point or a missing data point that fits the curve. And because we're not generating an even number of samples, it was 20.88, so this time it just put out 20. The next time it might put out 21. We can set this 0.042 hertz, 
This print statement is just rounding it off, but this is the number we're calculating for. And because this is such a low frequency, we're going to be sending the same sample, the very first one in the table, over and over a lot. And then we're going to do the next sample and send it a lot. So our tuning word is relatively small this time, and it takes a while to count up to get to the next sample out of our table. If we do 10 kilohertz, now we need to skip a lot more samples out of our table. Tuning word is large again, and we only need 4.41 samples to represent one cycle. So it does these four samples, skipping through the data table, and then just the way the accumulator rolls over, it doesn't restart exactly at zero, it just wraps around. So we're taking a different set of numbers each time. And as expected, the waveform is going to start to look more coarse. It's not going to look as much like a sine wave, but it is going to have the 10 kilohertz frequency. So depending on what we're doing, if we only care to generate a frequency, this may be fine. And in terms of audio sine waves, when we start getting higher in frequency, we start to interpret different waveform shapes, all more toward being a sine wave. By the time we get up to generating 20 kilohertz, we need 2.2 samples per cycle. If we let it keep running, eventually there will be spots that have three samples as the counter rolls over in different ways, like right here. But it works out that we're generating 20 kilohertz, and on the scope, it actually looks like it's amplitude modulated. Even though it's 20 kilohertz, the amplitude is increasing and decreasing, and we can see in the samples here. If we only need two, and it doesn't matter exactly the value of them, here we have a really small and a really large minimum and maximum. So that would show up as a large peak-to-peak -peak output. But then we end up getting two samples here that are really close together, so the sine wave is more compressed looking in amplitude. But it's still 20 kilohertz, and with a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, this meets Nyquist requirements. And from there I made another sketch for dual sine wave generating. In the main loop, instead of just setting the frequency and putting it out on the DAC, we can use the same one sine wave table and controlling with variables. We can read points out of that table as much as we want and generate multiple sine waves. So I have the main frequency and tuning word, and now alternate frequency and tuning word for a second signal, and I've got those variables both hooked up to a potentiometer on analog ADC input 0 and 1. So the pot can change between 0 and with 12-bit ADC up to 4095. And now in the interrupt routine, I have the phase accumulator for the main oscillator. So all I'm doing here is taking two different pointers into the same table, and whenever it's time, I just go get those values, and it's tracking two different sine waves. So now on the DAC, instead of just sending out the sample directly pointed at by the phase accumulator, I add these two separate samples together, where I shifted each one down by one bit first, so when I add them together, it fits within the 12 bits of the DAC. So just summing them together, sending them out to the DAC, we generate two simultaneous sine waves, just as a demo of how simple it is to manipulate this and get all kinds of results. Hopefully that makes some sense. We're going to carry this forward in upcoming audio synthesizer projects of all kinds. So if you want to see more like that, leave a comment and a like, and keep checking back. I'll see you on the next video.